Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how an action potential is transmitted along a non-myelinated axon. You should then be able to describe the importance of the refractory period. So far on this topic, we've looked at the resting potential and the action potential. I've put a link to those videos in the description below, and if you haven't seen those videos, then you need to watch them now. In this video, we're looking at how the action potential is transmitted down the axon. We're going to look at a non-myelinated neuron. In other words, a neuron without a myelin sheath. In the next video, we look at a myelinated neuron. I'm showing you here a non-myelinated axon in its resting state. Remember that during the resting state, we have a higher concentration of sodium ions outside the membrane than inside. We also have a higher concentration of potassium ions inside the membrane than outside. And remember that during the resting state, the inside of the axon membrane has a negative charge relative to the outside of the membrane. OK, imagine that a stimulus has caused the membrane to depolarize in region A. Voltage-gated sodium ion channels open, and sodium ions now diffuse into the axon down their electrochemical gradient. So region A is now undergoing the action potential. Sodium ions now move sideways from region A towards region B, attracted to the negative charge. Scientists call this a localized electrical circuit. This causes voltage-gated sodium ion channels to open in region B. Sodium ions diffuse into the axon in region B, causing region B to depolarize. In region A, voltage-gated sodium ion channels close and voltage-gated potassium ion channels open. Potassium ions now diffuse out of the axon in region A. So region A is beginning to repolarize. Localized electrical circuits now form between region B and region C, and the action potential continues to propagate down the axon. Now if we look again at region A, the outward diffusion of potassium ions means that the membrane has repolarized. So in region A, the membrane is negative on the inside and positive on the outside. Now sodium ions are actively transported out of the axon in region A by the sodium-potassium pump. So region A is now polarized back to its resting potential. At the same time, outward diffusion of potassium ions in region B means that region B is now repolarizing. So as you can see, a wave of depolarization makes its way along the axon. And once a region has depolarized, it then has to be repolarized back to the resting potential. Now, there's a key idea here that you need to understand. Once a region of the membrane has transmitted an action potential, there's a short period of time during which it cannot transmit another action potential. Scientists call this the refractory period, and there are two reasons for this. Firstly, once an action potential has passed a region of membrane, the membrane then has to repolarize. In other words, the membrane has to re-establish the electrochemical gradients for both sodium ions and potassium ions, and repolarization takes a certain amount of time. Secondly, once voltage-gated sodium ion channels have closed, they cannot open again for a short period of time. So for both of these reasons, there's a time delay before the membrane can transmit a second action potential. Now the refractory period is important for three reasons. Firstly, because the axon membrane enters the refractory period once it transmits an action potential, this ensures that the action potential can only travel in one direction. Secondly, the refractory period means that action potentials are clearly separated from each other and cannot overlap. And lastly, because there's a time delay between each action potential, this limits the number of action potentials that can be transmitted during a time period. As we saw in the video on the action potential, a stronger stimulus generates a higher frequency of action potentials than a weaker stimulus. However, because of the refractory period, there's a maximum frequency of action potentials that can be transmitted. And this means that there's a maximum strength of a stimulus that can be detected. In the next video, we look at how an action potential is transmitted in a myelinated neuron. Scientists call that process saltatory conduction. 